like in the Ura by from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And uh, I hope you're having a splendid Sunday out there in this festive week. Uh, I, I do love a bit of Christmas, me. I do absolutely adore Christmas. Why? Because Christmas is awesome, baby. Christmas is awesome. Uh, uh, goodwill and um, peace to all men. I guess women too, you know. Let's, let's, let's make it 2021, baby. Uh, uh, so this is a news and rumour patrol, and, and it's something I'm absolutely ecstatic about because some of these rumours are for uh, 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 the post-Chibnall years, are for the Russell D. Davis years. And, and, and honestly, I think they're bollocks mostly. <laughs> I do, but I'm just, it's so great to be reporting on rumours or stuff I'm actually excited about, right? I'm actually excited about Dr. Uge. And I understand a lot of people out there saying, listen, Rosalie Davis, he's not going to be the second coming. It's going to remain as awful as before. I just don't think so. Uh, listen, we just got to wait and find out. But honestly, this weekend, many of you went, many of you went to see Spider-Man No Way Home. And if you haven't seen it, I, uh, 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 I really recommend it. It was a lot of fun. And, and it's such an incredible rep uh, repudiation. Uh, repudiation? Is that the right word? That doesn't sound like the right word. Anyway, whatever that word is, it's such an inc it's it's incredible because uh, um, you know we've seen the Eternals, we've seen Shang Chi, we've seen Hawkeye, Loki, uh, um, Black Widow. Uh, what else has come out? The uh, uh, Winter uh, Winter Soldier. I was called Winter so Snowman. Winter Soldier. And what was that first one? All, basically everything, everything in the, in the MCU Phase 4 has been woke garbage, which has been spun to be incredibly successful. It's like, oh, it's the greatest success ever. Listen, if you went to see it this weekend, uh, as I did, I went on Wednesday, right, to a packed, packed, packed cinema, right? That's what, that, what it's like when saying is genuinely successful. And it wasn't just one packed theater. They, they had added on show upon show upon, there must have been like 10, 15 shows that day. All of them packed, right? All of them. This was pre-pandemic packed, and it was it was glorious. It was so much fun. I couldn't hear the screen, right? I, I could not hear the, hear the screen doesn't make any noise. I couldn't hear the, what they were saying because people were screaming too loud. It was like going to a Beatles concert. And I say I really, really enjoyed it. But the point is this: that uh, um, people want to be entertained. People want stuff that's good, and this has just showed how much money can be made. I think it's the, like, the second best opening ever. I <laughs> forget pandemic. It's one of the second best opening ever for uh, maybe a super. I I didn't. I haven't even even looked at the stats. It's doing very well though. It's doing incredibly well as opposed to Shang Chi and stuff like that and the Eternals where they got to go. Oh no! It's uh. It's so no no people aren't interested, right? People aren't. Same with Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who. People are not interested. Uh, uh, in in that dross, if they think it's crap, why? Because it normally is kind of crap, you know. So people are just simply not interested. Uh, um, and I think that message is getting through. And the other thing I'm very, very encouraged about was the reason Spider-Man was good. Speed of, the reason Spider-Man didn't have any lecturing in it or posturing or any nonsense. You know, it's because it was Sony. 75% Sony. Tw yeah, uh, uh, Marvel or Disney gets 25%. or 75% Sony. Um, and they like to make money, right? Sony also owns Doctor Who now. And they like things to be successful. Or they like things to make money. So uh, uh, that's very exciting, right? I, I am excited for the future of Doctor Who. And you know what, actually, really what I'm really excited about? A, a channel where I can, like, review things and expect some things to be good and some things to be bad. Like, well, one of my, my, my regrets, and having regrets is always a bad idea, because uh, I'm a Bible thumper, I believe in God. I think God puts you exactly where you're supposed to be to be the best you, right? That's often quite challenging at times, right? There's only cabbie. But, you know, uh, so I'm not a big one in looking back and, and, ha yeah, and, and, and having big regrets. However, however, I wish I had my channel during the Matt Smith years and the Capaldi years so I could review it and go, oh, this was excellent, this was terrible, right? And, and be, like, be a genuine review. I actually gush with excitement because I am excited about all Doctor Who because I love freaking Doctor Who. I'm sure most of you out there do too, right? Absolutely love it. Uh, uh, and I just think we're, we, we are on the cusp of an incredible time. I really, I, I listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't hurt to be optimistic. I understand people out there saying, oh, you're opening yourself to be hurt again. Yes, you're right, I am. But, you know, I love Doctor Who. <laughs> you, know, you, you do open yourself to get hurt for things that you love, right? I, I, or people, things that you love. So that's basically where I am. Fine, let's get into this video. Can we go, actually, I was going to make this on Friday because there's so much going down and I waited a couple of days. 
you know, over the uh, you know over Sabbath, and uh, um, a lot more happened. Right, a lot more happened. Right, like, share, subscribe, please. All those things are fantastic. Thank you very much. If I have time today, I'm setting up a Rumble account. I actually started on Friday. I'm setting up a Substack. That's my focus this week. I want to get them up and running by um, um, by Christmas. Uh, uh, I have no idea if you can live stream on on, uh, on, uh, on Rumble and maybe a WhatsApp list as well, right? Right. That that that's my goals for this week. I hope I'm I, I'm you know I'm able to make it. But well, like, share, subscribe, all those things are fan dabby double dozy and comment. Let me know what you think because as I said, we have a lot to talk about. So where should we start? <laughs> Let's start over here, right? Let's start over here with this. Yeah. Now this is almost certainly photoshopped. I. I but I hope it isn't. <laughs> I hope it isn't. See, I, I, I just feel this version of Doctor Who is so opposite to what Doctor Who is. Uh, I want them to go as far in the opposite direction of Doctor Who as humanly possible. And I think this is basically it, right? This is basically it. Now, you know, people who like to say, hey, you don't like seeing same-sex from answers. Darling, darling, darling. Nothing I like more than seeing 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 some uh, 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 seeing some reasonably hot lesbians together. That's something that I really and, and you know what? Every day is somewhat of a struggle to avoid uh, uh, spending a lot of time uh, 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 researching that. So that's not the issue. That's not the issue at all. I I think this is uh, if this is real, which I don't think it is. I think this is the uh, agenderizing that we we've heard so so much about, right? Uh, uh, and let, to be sure, the uh, the fandom that has supported this era of Doctor Who thus far uh, uh, are mad as anything that they haven't got this yet. They are super 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 pissed off. Um, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, uh, it, it, it but they are pissed off about quite quite a few things right now. Uh, most notably, right, uh, is this thing over here. So this is the cover for our upcoming uh, fourth Doctor release solo. So what? Who cares, right? So this is it's got ne was it Nerish Hughes in it, uh, Trevor Cooper, and James Dreyfus. Now James Dreyfus is somebody who's been under the uh, uh, the gong of cancellation for for quite some time because he had the um, he committed the unforgivable crime of saying uh, I it, it, um, I don't even know what, what he said. What was it? He said he wasn't relentlessly positive about uh, the reshaping of all society to uh, uh, to revolve around trans uh, some trans people, not even all trans people. The, uh, the reshaping of it. He was somewhat taken aback at this uh, and said, "Maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe it's not a good." Idea. And so the crazies who really like this era of Doctor Who. They lost their shit. They were like, no, no, bigot, transphobe, turf. I, you know, I keep looking up what turf means, and it just seems so stupid. My brain will not retain it. You know, like, like my brain retains the definition of a rusty trombone much better because that just makes me laugh more. By the way, uh, 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 rusty trombone. If you if you are uh, 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 intrigued, it's uh, you need uh, uh, to perform that. You need two lovers. So obviously, you know, in a committed relationship. Uh, one of them being male, right? One of them being, oh, one of them at least having a penis. I, I don't want to, don't want to say, you know, what's a man, what's a woman, but at least one of them has a penis. So the the person with, with a penis, or one of the people with the penises, they stand up, right? They stand up, and the person, uh, uh, um, the other person, <laughs> who may or may not have a penis, uh, uh, they kneel down uh, uh, behind the person with the penis, and they uh, uh, insert their tongue into into the penis person's rectum well um uh how can i say it uh, uh well i think you guys worked it out right but that's called a rusty trombone and you know it just it just disturbed me so much that now, i can understand one person trying that or maybe three or four across the world randomly but so many people doing it said oh man we've got to think of a name for this right we've got to think of a name for that and we're going and we're, we're going to go with rusty trombone <laughs> okay that's the, that's the world we live in baby that is the world we live in anyway the world we live in uh is changing rapidly because uh this was this audio with james Dreyfus and the full doctor was recorded in 2017 before his uh, uh obscene evil comments which were nothing of the sort, right? We're nothing of the sort. You know, it, it, you can always tell when they're lying, when they say known, known transphobe. No, no, no. When they say known, they mean they want it to be known, <laughs> even if it's real or not. No, yeah, no. So uh, they've been having, the, 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 the crazy Jody fans have been having meltdown beyond meltdown. 
like super super duper meltdowns uh, uh, about this, and they go, yeah, and then 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 comes in and says, well, it's probably a, a contract factory release. Well, here, let's let's look at an example of one, shall we? Um, over here. So uh, this gentleman is saying, I'm not attacking anyone here. This is not a hate post. But. <laughs> Well, really, really, listen, I'm not a racist, but, <laughs> but never in my life have I seen a contract where performances must be released, because yes, this is one of the things they were saying to console themselves, that like, well, it must be a contractual obligation, they must release it, uh, 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 therefore we can still like Big Finish, no, 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 here's what's going on. Big Finish, like many, like Sony, right? Like many, many businesses, they have noticed that catering to uh, 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 this type of person, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, these, these type of people um, hasn't been a profitable move. They make a lot of noise on Twitter, right? They made a lot of noise on Twitter and they scream out about basically everything, right? Ah! Ah! If you ever seen South Park, they, they, they represent them as PC babies. They have a bunch of babies that's crying. <laughs> and he thinks, ah! Ah! It's, it, it's, Liberal progressive fragility at its best, right? So, uh, um, and they were saying that, well, it's probably just a contractual obligation. They've got to release this evil man's uh, audio. No, 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 no. It's because kowtowing to you morons has not been a profitable move. I imagine Big Finish has not had a good couple of years. In fact, well, I'm going to do my, my year in review for Big Finish, I think probably next week. But uh, um, this has been a rebuilding year, and a year, I think, where they've come to realise that if they don't cater to their mainstream audience, which is not the, the tiny percentage of people who live on Twitter and scream and scream and scream until they're sick, but just normal people, and I hate, I, I'm going to use that word quite, quite, quite liberally, normal people just want to listen to good Doctor Who, and they've changed their content uh, you know, accordingly. It, it, it's, uh, uh, they honestly... You, the universal, the universal truth is go woke, go broke, right? And, and nowhere is that seen more starkly than comparing Spider-Man No Way Home to Shang-Chi, Black Widow, uh, and The Eternals, right? The, the, no woke marketing at all, right? Um, which is, so, I, so Big Finish to a reasonable extent has gone woke. Uh, uh, the Eighth Doctor Rage gone woke, and I think they're paying the price for it, right? Uh, uh, now, I, I, and also they got some... Black for cancelling him uh, about three months ago and said, well, of course we were always planning on releasing this in, in March or something. Now, I, I, but the question is, was this release delayed or not, right? Uh, I think probably. If you remember last year or the year before, they had this re weird release of a story uh, um, that was recently recorded. They say, like, oh, just so we can show you what we did in lockdown. It was kind of an okay story, a little bit mediocre. Um... My guess is that was to replace uh, uh, this story that, that they decided not to release. Question is, is John Barrowman ever going to be uncancelled? Because there's so there's so little reason that. Um, I have hired and replaced actors at a lot in my career. They are paid in for and replaced. Yes, yes, yes. If that's what you want to... Again, look at... Uh, uh, well, you can't look at it because I think it's closed down. Time Fracture. How's that going for you, Jody? Right? You put Jody front and centre. Go woke, go broke. So Time Fracture closed down, I believe. Like, uh, and maybe taking the insurance with them. Um, and... Uh, um, they had recorded Captain Jack, and then they replaced him with River Song. Go, oh, good for you, good for you. Uh, but but uh, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Now the trouble with um, this type of deep intolerance, right? <laughs> this type, the, 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 not intolerance, these kangaroo calls. The the, the trouble they just uh, um, very rarely stand up to any. Uh, what was it any form of jurisprudence? The the reason they people they people have these kangaroo courts is because they uh, 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 they don't have a leg to stand on, right? That's really the only reason, uh, and they all, always 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 ends up coming to bite them on the ass. Now, what am I referring to here? Uh, oh, I'm referring to of course this thing over here. Chris Knowles, two women accused Sex and City uh, star of serial uh, of se like is it serial or sexual assault? Is that sexual assault? But is that is it too? I don't know. I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, you remember Me Too? So Me Too happened and they wanted to blame Trump for it. And you see? You see the misogyny of Donald Trump? Do you see how it, it goes to every part of the life? No. 
No, I don't know. This was something affecting the, uh, I would say, the uh, entertainment industry and probably politi you know, politics as well. I think you have these abuses in those very, very lucrative, high-powered sectors of the world um, where, yes, I believe there is a lot, a lot, a lot of sexual abuse. And I don't think it's really about sex. You know, it, 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 I think it's about power. I think it's always all about power. Uh, and I think these people are bad people. <laughs> That's basically my bottom line. So, so Hollywood uh, uh, just can't take accountability for itself. So they, uh, uh, they say, no, it's the whole world. It's the whole world of me too. And we are going to lead. We're going to lead everybody in repentance. Uh, do you remember the, what was it? Um, you had all these douchebag actors in, in black and white say, I take accountability. I take accountability. Well, you had... Guy who used to do Apu in The Simpsons, and God, how, the, okay, just as the side of the stupidity of this wokeness, right? Uh, uh, so they say that's like blackface. No, 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 no. Hank Azaria, right? Also, they Hank Azaria play, played Apu. You know that why that wasn't racist? You know why that why that wasn't uh, uh, discriminatory against Indian people? Because Hank Azaria wasn't playing an Indian person. He was playing an American that happened to be Indian. He'll he'll take the piss out of himself. Right? Why? Because he's an American! And Apu's an American! And that's what it should be. Your skin colour, your ethnicity shouldn't mean absolutely nothing. But it does. So anyway, so uh, Chris North, uh, if you're expecting to see him again... Uh, 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 <laughs> okay, I, I really hope they already have him in, this, in, in the new year special. Wouldn't that be awesome? But if you're expecting to see him again... I would guess again at this point, right? I'm pretty sure Jacob Anderson was there to replace John Barrowman, right? I, I, I guess, guess again, which is a shame, really, because he's really one of the only bits of the Chibnall era, one of the only human performances, which I quite liked, right? I wouldn't mind seeing him with another Doctor. I thought he was a, a, a fun, interesting character, you know? I really enjoyed him, but uh, uh, no more. <laughs> I guess no more. Let's read this. Uh, um, keeping in mind, again, uh, uh, Noel Clark, John Barrowman, uh, um, James Dreyfus, right? Just keep in mind all those kind of, uh, council people. Uh, will they ever take an accountability for themselves? I doubt it. I doubt it. Two women have accused Sex and the City star uh, actor Chris North of sexually assaulting them in 2004 and 2015. So he's got a, he's got an 11 year spread. So uh, uh, 2026, you want to you you okay? 2026, you want to stay away from this guy? Okay, that that would be my uh, uh, recommendation. Two women gave details accounts of alleged sexual assaults to the Hollywood Reporter, published under the pseudonyms of Zoe and Lily. The magazines said the women did not know each other. Well, there was, you know, uh, uh, 11 years apart. Statement In the statement, Mr. North, uh, 67, said the encounters were consensual and the accusations of the assault are uh, categorically false. Well, here's a question. This is really what's, what, uh, what, what's coming up now. It's... Is coercion rape, right? I mean, are you... What's that name of that movie? Magnolia. Another very, very good movie. It's, it's got to be your type of thing, but... Uh, um, who is it? Not Tom Hanks. It's uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is in it, playing a, a, a reasonably sleazy person who runs seminar for pathetic men, teaching them how to get laid, essentially, right? And it's a lot of it's just organisation. <laughs> a lot of it is just like, I'm going to call this person, make a list of when you call somebody, I call them again, kind of wear them down, right? Wear them down uh, 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 and you get into it. Now, is that is that rape? I, I, it's a good question, isn't it? Uh, is that a sort? I... Um I can I can hear I can go both directions in that, right? I can I can I I can go both I mean look if somebody's saying no, the answer's no, right? If somebody's saying no, the answer's no. If somebody says yes, it seems to be the answer's yes, even if they didn't really want to say yes. I mean it seems to be you gotta take some responsibility for saying yes. But again, listen, I'm not a woman. I haven't been in 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 that position. I do understand men generally speaking are much bigger uh, and stronger than women. And it's just the way it is, right? So I yeah, if if I was a woman, I was dating a guy who you know was, who I know could physically harm me. I might be uh, I might be intimidated. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's honestly, I think everything breaks down to a lack of communication. So I think I think they're probably both telling the truth. But let's let's read this, okay? Let's read this. So no investigation. Uh, Los Angeles Police Department says there's no currently an investigation allegation made against the actor. 
Uh, there's no record or report. Okay, fine, because there, there very rarely is a report. And again, I don't think that really uh, speaks against the the accusers, right? I can understand. You know, you're you're somewhat traumatized after uh, some kind of, of uh, um, sexual assault. You don't want you, you're embarrassed. You don't want people to know. You don't want people to say you're lying. I I get it. I get. I can, that doesn't really mean there's no evidence that, that you can't. It, it rolls out. But you take it something like uh, was it Christine Blasey Ford? Uh, who was uh, accusing, what's his name, the guy from the Supreme Court who was applying to be the Supreme Court. There it was really different because uh, there's no way her claims could be true. And you had people testifying against it. Uh, and you had people, uh, uh, and yeah, the it, character, it, it, that of, what's the guy's name? I can't, Brett, Brett Kavanaugh. His character was one beyond reproach, quite frankly. You know, uh, uh, and, and again, people, the, the, uh, her allegations are not possible. Um, so, okay, but okay, but let's just read, read further. But again, this is the problem. This is the problem with the Jesse Smollett's of the world, right? This is the problem of believing anything just because you want it to be true, right? Coving I saw the, the kid from the, the Covington kids, you know, they were the, there was some uh, march a couple of years ago, and an NG guy was like an, uh, uh, in his face, and he was smiling at, uh, at him, and he was portrayed throughout the entirety of the media of being an evil white supremacist smirking at his uh, 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 somebody he considers beneath him. Turns out not not the truth at all. He he was actually a victim. Uh, CNN uh, paid him an uh, uh, <laughs> undisclosed amount. Uh, how big was the undisclosed amount? Well, the reports of NBC they're playing him another undisclosed amount were two hundred seventy-five million dollars. How many more two hundred seventy-five millions do these organisations have? Probably way too many. Right? Probably way too many. I think Carl Rittenhouse is on his way to take take, uh, 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 take some more money off them. Uh, you go, you go, Carl. Let's go, Brandon, baby. Uh, the detailed article by Kim Masters also interviews people such as Zoe's boss at the time, the rape treatment centre. Oh, okay, she went to a rape treatment centre. That's not a good sign. Uh, and a friend later claimed the account all seemed to back up the woman's claims. Yeah, this is in stark contrast to Blasey Ford. The article also quotes, uh, uh, was it, tech messages purportedly between Mr. North and uh, Lily at the time of the assault. Uh, Chris North is known for acting roles uh, in Laura and all the sex in the city, which played the popular character Mr. Big, follow, uh, a follow on to the hugely popular series entitled, and just like has recently been released, uh, BBC contact him for comment. Same from the actor to the Hollywood Reporter and Rolling Stone read, the accusations against me made by individuals I've met, uh, uh, by individuals I met years, even decades ago, are categorically false. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, he may be telling the truth. He may not be telling the truth, but according to the rules of Chris Chibnall, this person's guilty and must now be flushed away in the toilet history. And uh, 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 the thing is, I don't think it matters if he is guilty or not. I don't think anybody should be uh, subject to a kangaroo call. Like, yeah, again, no Clark, uh, John Barrowman. It's difficult to question, uh, question the time of this coming out. I uh, I don't know the reason why they're surfacing now, but I, I do know this. I did not assault these women. I, it sounds like he doesn't believe he did, or maybe he's just lying. Um, seeing that he was reprising Rowan Sex and City set me off. Uh, yeah, that's, could be. Could be. Uh, following uh, uh, what she describes as flirtations with Zoe, uh, uh, flirtation. Zoe says she accepted an invitation to visit him at his West Hollywood apartment, where he alleged he raped. Uh, he raped her. I don't know. Listen, I again, again. Uh, no means no. No means no. Okay, everybody out there. No means no. Right, but you got to say no. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying in the in the world that you, that uh, uh, the people like Chris Chibnall have created. Now these are questions we now need to ask. Um, after a friend, uh, friend says she went to hospital, uh, she, but she needed stitches because of the assault. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Listen, I understand people being into rough sex, okay? <laughs> I understand and quite enjoy it, quite frankly. No, I understand, <laughs> I understand that. But, like, when, when you get to the point of needing stitches, things are got, uh, you need a safe word, right? You need a safe word. I, uh, uh was it, was it, League of Gentlemen? Where they had that weird sex club <laughs> where they go where they're all uh, uh, wearing these masks and the safe word is Russell Harty. <laughs> Russell Harty. Um, in 2006, uh, uh, so he did, however, tell a boss at the time, Hollywood would have said it, uh, it spoke to them and backed up so his claims. Okay, yeah, but uh, you know, you've got to be fair to both sides. 
Uh, in 2006, so you saw, uh, saw counselling at the uh, UCLA Rape Crisis Center. Oh, she had nightmares and flashbacks without addressing her case specifically. The clinic would confirm uh, that she had been uh, treated there. This looks bad. This looks. This does look bad. Okay. The article goes on to say that Lily met Mr. North, uh, of whom she was an enormous fan while working as a waitress in the VIP section on New York Club in 2015. He was hitting me for sure, so I uh, I was flattered and knew he was married, which was uh, shameful of me to admit. She quoted, okay, so she went out for drinks and said, before going back to his apartment where he tried to make out with her, before allegedly pulling down a pants and raping, okay, well, okay. Uh, listen, if you don't get to the making out section, you're probably not getting to the sex section, okay? I, let, Again, these are just uh, uh, rules for life, I, I would say. Um, uh, Peloton campaign achieved. He said, uh, by the way, I have to ask if you enjoy uh, uh, and now, uh, and night last week. I thought it was a lot of fun, but wasn't sure how you felt. Lead right. mm, I certainly enjoyed your company. Great conversation. Not to go into specifics over text message, but I did feel slightly used. Uh, uh, doesn't sound like... I don't know what to tell you. Listen, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Um, but, you know, this is just the world that people like Chibnall have made. You know, it, 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 it's, it's just the way it is. Um, so will we be seeing him again in the special? Doesn't sound like it. If they do, they're going to be frantically reshooting. But what, what we have, so we have some news about the specials. Who gives a crap, right? Who gives a crap? Well, firstly, we've got... Uh, Eve of the Daleks without without Chris North, obviously, um, which seems to be like a bottle episode, a rom com uh, set in 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 a uh, warehouse uh, and a time loop. So, you know, it seems to be that this is a way of saving money, right? So we have two more specials after that. God help us. So the news just came out that uh, it's being written by Chris Chimnall and Ella Road, right? So who's Ella Road? Who's Ella Road? Let's look 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 at her writing credits. And they are zero. There's something coming out next year called uh, Call My Agent. She wrote the fourth and the eighth episode of that. But it's not It's not really good news now, is it? Come on, come on. I mean, look, I, also, the, uh, the director for the, 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 this episode, uh, Annette Lafour, this is her first mainstream gig. I don't know what to tell you. I do not know what to tell you. It just doesn't seem... Um, like it's at all a good idea for me, uh, to me, right? It just, uh, 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 I, and honestly, I, w I wish her the best. Some of the, the footage I've seen with the, the, she's got very good lighting in, in, in the episode. So uh, uh, generally I wish her the best, but it seems like, like bringing in new talent like on, to, on this very, very big public, with not, none of them are big and public anymore. Again, you know, you want to see the difference between uh, um, when something's popular and it's not, Spider-Man No Way Home and The Eternals, right? The Eternals is Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who, right? It's doing terribly. It's doing terribly. It's got, even with, I would say, uh, 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 disingenuously inflated ratings, which is it's, it's essentially what it is. It's still getting the lowest ratings, you know, like 4.59. 4, it's like really, really low ratings. Uh, uh, and again, they probably augmented by about two or three, th two or three million. I wouldn't be surprised um, from the way they the 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 uh, um, uh, collect them. So uh, collect the ratings. So yeah, listen, these 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 big episodes, they're not really that big a deal anymore, are they? They get small audiences because of Doctor uh, because of jo Jodie Whittaker. I, I bring on, bring on a uh, 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 Rusty Davis is all I can say, right? Bring on Rusty Davis. Now that's going to be fan dabby double dozy. So let's talk about talking about the Rusty Davis uh, year. So and, and we'll get. Oh no, there's one more story we need to go over. One second. Uh, one more rumor I should say we we need to go, over, which is this one over here. Um, John Barrowman and Gemma Redgrave to return on BBC Centenary Special airing next autumn. I find it unlikely. I find it unlikely that John Barrowman's going to be rehabilitated by that time, right? I, I do find it unlikely. Um, Jim Regre, sure, absolutely. These rumors are the, the rumors of Sasha one returning as a master. Well, they said he's returning at the end of Doctor Who Flux, didn't they? Yeah, your terrible things. And their master. Yeah, all the, all, yeah, all the subtlety 
of uh, uh, um, MCU Phase 4 <laughs> feminism, right? Exactly. Uh, returning Master, uh, we already know uh, Bradley Walsh is returning as Graham. I believe all of them apart from John Barrowman. I, I, it'll be nice if John Barrowman returns. I think it'll be very nice if John Barrowman returns. Again, is this, is this the Easter special? God, I hope so. <laughs> that would be so funny if it's Easter special. Uh, um, but okay, so let's look forward to what the new do new. Let's look forward to new Doctor Who, right? I, which I am super looking forward to. So there's there's first thing is where we'll look over here. Uh, Return of Doctor Who Confidential. This is super exciting. Now, one of the reasons I'm excited for Return of Rusty Davis is that he uh, he can't shut up, right? He can't, well, especially when he's excited. Especially when he's super, super excited. About it. He just can't shut up. And the promotion was everywhere in his era, right? We had the, the weekly podcast, which was the... Uh, the like the writer's commentary, and they were glorious. They were so happy. Right, man, I was reading a, a, F, a SFX magazine from 2014, January 2014, yesterday. I did pick one up. I thought, that would be true. You forgot what how happy times they were, how, how much merchandise there was, all the, all, you know, all the uh, um, conventions going on. Right, it was huge, right? But Rusty, it was just so freaking happy, and he would talk about it nonstop. I bet we're getting production notes back. So I, I can't imagine that's not what we're going to get this time. And I also think it's going to be different. I really do. I think what, the thing that really made this happen is Russell D. Davis has an idea, right? I think he has an idea of like, ooh, that's going to be interesting. And he says it's going to be a scary one. I called him Moffat. This is going to be a, a scary one. Ah, I'm, I'm really excited. Okay? I'm really excited. I think one of the scariest episodes uh, uh, that Russell D. Davis has done will be Midnight. So if it's like in, the, in that realm... Of like, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be much more populist because uh, he he knows how to do populist drama. Uh, so yeah, according to uh, Doctor Who Confidential, someone is in talks with Bad Wolf about the return of uh, Doctor Who Confidential. Apparently, Russell is extremely busy at the moment, but will provide an uh, update. Uh, 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 provide an uh, update over this soon. I I can't imagine this sort of thing is not going to happen, right? I I totally believe this sort of thing will absolutely absolutely go down i think there's gonna be lots of promotion because i think rusty davis knows you we you need to flush away the uh public the public uh, uh um uh, uh persona the the the, pu the public's impression of jody Whittaker's doctor who which is a dour bore fest right just in the same way, when it came back in 2005, they needed to flush away the idea of Doctor Who having low production values. They need to uh, flush away the idea of Doctor Who being a relentless bore fest, right? So, uh, 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 Ken, I'm excited. If, and I understand it's dangerous to be excited. It's dangerous to be optimistic because we have been really burnt. And it's, it, whatever's going to be, what's going to be. Just enjoy the ride until you get there. Like, if it works out, it's going to be awful. You're not going to, you're going to be, uh, uh, um, it's not going to make it much worse being optimistic to start with. Um, so what, so what are we looking at with, with Ross D. Davis? So that we, so this report just came out. Uh, and again, I don't know how, how real it is. So Ross D. Davis is doing something in 20, in, in 20, uh, 2023. And a special, right? And then moving into the future. So what is it going to be? So this is a rumor. Um, I'm not sure I believe this rumor, but it's a, it's a fun rumor. And people say, oh, oh, you just click baitery. No, talking about rumors are fun, right? Because most of the, half the time they're right. Uh, uh, or even more than half the time they, they turn out to be right in some way or another. Talking about rumors are fun because we like Doctor Who, right? Uh, um... So as part of the 60th anniversary celebrations in 2023, returning showrunner Rossi Davis confirmed, so he hasn't, that the 10th and 11th Doctors are returning for an epic multi-Doctor five-part series. Um, I can't see this happening, right? I mean, honestly, people have asked me, what would I do with Doctor Who, right? What would I do with Doctor Who? And the first thing you have to do is remind people why they love Doctor Who. Right, you have to remember, you have to get back to that straight away. So I always thought doing something along these lines, like maybe do an animated Doctor Who series, and you can bring in all the old actors uh, to do 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 the voice. Get Big Finish to do do the voices, right? Uh, uh, but you, listen, if he can do it, it'll be great. Now from. Um, from Matt Smith's idea, I think it's probably a, 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 a will be good for his career because it's a shorter run. 
Uh, and also, it reminds people why they love Matt Smith, right? More so than Doctor Who, it reminds them, like, why do they, why do you love Matt Smith? Oh, because he was freaking awesome, right? That's why you you, you like Matt Smith. Uh, uh, and David Tennant as well. Again, it's a limited run. Uh, 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 he loves the role. He absolutely he loves Doctor Who, loves the role. Uh, and it, it, Doctor Who is in need of urgent, serious care, which is why Russell Davis came back, right? Uh, I I think probably he was going. Oh, what would I do to save it? What would I do? Like this, and he thought, and he had an idea, and uh, um, that's what we're gonna see. But like the other room, I don't have a source for it. The other room that I've received cannot confirm it. They are currently working on not one, not two, not three, but four Doctor Who series in the Doctor Who uh, Doctor Who universe. Um, yeah, and that's exactly the way I think it's gonna go. Probably that's not gonna be till twenty twenty four, right? Uh, um, I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a Christmas special in, in 2022, quite frankly. I, I, uh, I think people want to be entertained again. People really want to be entertained again and not lectured to. Again, Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home is the, uh, 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 is the ongoing, <laughs> yeah, it's the ongoing uh, uh, elephant in the room. Fine. So let's have a look at what his, now we know, we talked about how he's going to be, uh, this new Doctor is going to be promoted. Let's have a look at uh, what that Doctor could be. Now, a lot of it, the uh, hashtag was going around Sheen for 14. Uh, I've always doubted his casting. I thought he'll be very good. I, I what's it? I think uh, Amari Douglas is a front runner. I think there's probably four or five people front runners. Um, and I think they're probably a mix of skin colors. I, I don't think there are any women in in the mix right i that that would be my because again you need to re-establish doctor who as a brand uh, uh, um but sadly you're not going to re-establish it with uh, michael sheen uh doctor who michael sheen rules out 14th doctor after being voted fan favorite it ain't me and it doesn't sound like he's just trying to throw people off the scent um Michael Sheen has revealed he hasn't been approached for the 14th Doctor role, but is thrilled fans thought of him. The good Omens actor is no stranger to a spot of time travel, passing through the decades of the last, uh, in his new film, Last Train to Christmas. But uh, as... Oh, it actually looked pretty good. I saw, I read a review of that the other day. But as for whether or not it'll, uh, it'll be, he's about to be past the keys of the TARDIS after being voted fan favourite, not so much. I must say I'm very flattered and there's been uh, a lot of people, particularly Doctor Who fans, who said they would like to see me as Doctor Who, uh, he told uh, uh, Metro.co.uk. You know what you should really do? Uh, oh, somebody should, well, not somebody, you know what Big Finish should really do? They should do a Michael Sheen season of Doctor Who. It would sell like hotcake. It would do very well. And get get good, solid writing. Get Gareth Roberts to write it. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, uh, that will send, send a message. Uh, much more so than James Drivers. Uh, it's a great thing to say. Uh, uh, none of those people were. Uh, uh, I have to say, none of those people work on Doctor Who, so I, uh, I have not heard from them. I would be very surprised myself if, when the Doctor transforms, it, if it, it, it is me, uh, because presumably the person who's doing it already knows. I don't think so. I think they know they're being considered, but I don't think we're close to a casting yet, and it ain't me. Or maybe, again, I don't know anything. This is, who knows? Who knows? Uh, rather than blue boxes, Michael's uh, busy doing his time tra uh, uh, traveling in a train as he stars alongside Game of Thrones, uh, Natalie Am uh, Emmanuel, which is enough to get me to watch pretty much anything, quite frankly, in the last train, Train to Christmas. Blah, 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 blah. Tony finds it is about he plays. Tony finds himself transported to 1995 where uh, with his life in Taz as he discovers waking up, uh, uh, walking up and down the train. It's in different points of his life. Yeah, this sounds really good. This, uh, wait, wait, did, did, did it say when it's playing? Uh, it's on Sky December 8th. Oh, it's on, on Sky yesterday. Fine, I will check that out. I think I'm probably going to do a review of it. Finally, finally, news and uh, rumors and, of course, bad reporting. Right, look at, look at this insanely misleading headline for um uh from radio times again in their desperate attempt to make doctor who seem popular and relevant uh so what's going on tonight miller cast in new russell d davis doctor who story oh oh what is tonight miller gonna be the doctor oh oh is that gonna happen uh uh it, and she says it's russell isn't it it's always a gem so i'm not even gonna read the story because it bollocks absolutely but what's the what is this story it's uh, the mind of Hojack. This was a spec script Russell wrote in, I would say, well, the eight, obviously before the Sixth Doctor left for uh, Sixth Doctor and Mel. Uh, uh, it's, so look, in the background, 
of the and the cover's been released. It's got Tanai Miller in it. She looks doesn't she looks kind of weird in this cover, right? I mean, like she just I I, I think where's going. But here's something I've noticed: it's the Rossley Davis tropes. Look at the uh, housing estate in the background, right? It it seems. Uh, 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 that's something that Russell D. Davis really likes putting in. Uh, I'm, okay, so I'm going to close on a recommendation. It's Christmas time. We love Christmas time. My one of my favorite Doctor Who Christmas uh, uh, stories ever is one you may not have heard of. It's written by by Russell D. Davis. Uh, uh, it's not on TV. Big Finish has it. It's called Damaged Goods. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic, right? It's a and there's so much in it that is like a proto rose, right? It's often been said that. Um, you can go straight from survival, Sylvester McCoy's last story, into Rose, and it's kind of seamless, and it is, right? Survival is a very urban story, so, you know, contemporary story with uh, uh, contemporary London life, straight into Rose, same thing. Uh, uh, if you want to make the progression a little bit smoother, check out Damaged Goods. Now, this was a, a novel that he wrote in the 90s yeah my, and he felt that this was his only chance to do doctor who and it's really good it's a really good creepy story and i do like his take on doctor who, uh which is why I've, I, I i was i have this pre-ordered i think it's gonna be pretty darn good too honestly other three dire specials where again again we might be seeing this uh uh the future of doctor who looks pretty rosy and, and, and as it was it just over a week from now no two weeks from now there's only going to be two more of these specials to go, right? Only two more hours of it to go ever. And at the same time, Rossi Davis is going to be building steam with it with, with his new Doctor Who. Uh, uh, I think 2022 is going to be a much better year than 2021. In terms of Doctor Who fans, I think 2022 is actually going to be, ultimately going to be a much better year than 2021 as well. In terms of everything else, look, I, I said right, you know, right from the beginning of the, the Jewish New Year, which was uh, September... The flavor of this year is narrative hitting reality. Uh, and that's really what we saw. Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, yeah, no, no, The Eternals is so popular. Captain Marvel, so popular. No, Spider-Man No Way Home was popular. And we've all bloody seen, seen, seen the difference. Doctor Who, oh no, Jodie Whittaker, uh, TV orders in general are falling. It's still popular. No, 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 no. You're about to see the narrative hit reality. And the, uh, a great example of narrative hit hitting reality uh, is this. The, 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 the wailing and gnashing of teeth at the uh, release of this story. Honestly, I didn't really like the James Dreyfus Master so much. I thought it was okay. I thought it was like an unnecessary uh, uh, um, uh, addition. I doubt we're gonna hear any more. None of his stories were that good. Again, the first one wasn't bad. All the others really kind of skippable, I would say. <laughs> I was going, or even avoidable. But it's just a very good sign that uh, uh, the age of wokeness may be ending. Uh, again, narrative hitting reality. We can't have enough of that. My name is Sila Beck, and you rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>